the doomsayer. I'm almost afraid to pick up uh, the phone to push that button, Eric. This guy scares the hell out of me. Trans- I don't want to shoot the messenger, but, you know. Yeah, I know, but it's very tough. If I did shoot the messenger, I wouldn't have to hear the message. And that's, you know, there's an argument for that. Trends forecaster, hmm. and a very good one. Gerald Salente is on the phone. Petit on Mr. Salente. Happy days are here again. Oh, it, it's a new Gerald. <laughs> you, have, uh, some, you have some good news for us. Yes? No? No? <laughs> yeah, some sucker's going to win the lotto. I love that ad I was listening to, the Georgia Lottery. You know, when I was a kid growing up, you know, they used to have this thing called, you know, numbers running. You know, the people would, the guys in the neighborhood, we, you'd bet on the last numbers of the, the people that attended the racetrack. Mm-hmm. And people would bet a quarter, a half a dollar. And the DAs would come in. You know, and bust this, and then they they make you know these big announcements. You know that the people that can afford it the less are being taken advantage of, and you can't have this kind of thing in a moral society until the until the government gets in the business. And then you gotta you know you gotta be in it to win it. Right. And then I love the ending of that one in Georgia over there. Play responsibly. Yeah, you see people lined up with it, you know making sixty two fifty a week and putting it all down. On the lot of it's responsible. <laughs> they're, they're responsible. As long as you don't spend more than you have. Those are, uh, Gerald, I, I, I'm very offended. The, the people in the lottery line are some of the most responsible people on <laughs> earth. You've got to be kidding me. All I right. mean, you know, the government's, I mean, the hypocrisy that just keeps coming out is, you know, it's beyond belief. Give me an example of what well, you're talking about. Well, what's going on over in Egypt, for example. You know, they, they Obama and, and Hillary Clinton come out and say, you know, what's, you have to treat the people in a respectful way, and the police have to be careful of not hurting the people and, and protect our journalists. Mm-hmm. You see what they did up at the G20 meeting two years ago up in Pittsburgh? when the students went out and protested. They beat the they, crap out of them. Yeah, they had enough, you know, these, these cops dressed up like mutant turtles with enough body armor to go through the Battle of the Bulge unscathed, wielding their batons, these big tough guys, you know, mm-hmm. at the co-eds. Right. And look what happens at the Republican and Democratic conventions when anybody tries to protest. Yeah. They beat the hell out of you. Uh, you and the what? same thing that goes on with the Iraq war protests. What a bunch of hypocrisy. We could never, we could never do what they're doing in Egypt in this country. They would smack you down. The goon squads would be in in five seconds flat. Let me ask you something, Gerald. Uh, during the uh, the big Super Bowl uh, summit between O'Reilly and Obama, uh, weren't you uh, a little surprised that O'Reilly didn't ask one simple question? Why is it that uh, it's uh, Obama uh, praises the Egyptian people for rising up against their government, but sees uh, no no praise for the Tea Party people who did the exact same thing a year ago? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, the hypocrisy. You can't rise up against this government. Look, let's get this really straight for any children out there that can't open their eyes. You have over in Egypt, this has nothing to do with theocracy or, or democracy. You have a dictatorship. Well, what do you think you have over here? You have a two-party dictatorship. You have the Bananos and the Gambinos, but they changed their names to the Republicans and the Democrats. The system is so tightly closed. You turn on the TV, it's the same old... We just want to light it up every once in a while. Yeah. (laughs) All right, cue the thunder music. There's more. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think the Muslims will take over Egypt like a... Many people fear. No, it's not at all. And that's, that's the, you see, this is the kind of thing that, ha- again, we're, we're not, you know, all these people are saying what's going to happen. They, they didn't see it happen. As you guys know, the regular guys, we've, we've been forecasting this was going to happen. And our Sp- Autumn Trends Journal, the headline read, Off With Their Heads 2.0. This has nothing to do, as I said, about mm-hmm. democracy or theocracy. It has to do with people earning eh, about $10 a day. Food prices are record highs. And you got a criminal government in there where the people at the top are ripping off all the dough. So you Sound predicted familiar? The, yeah, you <laughs> predicted the food riots would be happening. Exactly. Food prices are at all-time highs. 
So what the, what the people are doing, I mean, the United States has been supporting this dictator for $40 billion of our dough, by the way. I always say the government, you know, the United States government paid them. What paid them? What, what, what it, it come out of Obama's pocket, Clinton's pocket, Bush's pocket? No. It comes out of your pocket. Your back pocket. Yeah, so $40 billion for a dictator. Now people are angry, and now they start to spin. Oh, if they're going to take over, the Muslim Brotherhood is going to take... Now, the, this is a secular government. Matter of fact, two of our guys are over there, John West and Gary Abitelli. This is a secular uh, a government, a secular country. The bro Muslim Brotherhood... I mean, you're talking about the evangelicals, you know? It's about the same percentage. So they build it up into this kind of thing. And people forget, you know, they're comparing it to Iran. What happened in Iran is the same thing, basically. And I, was, I remember it very well because that's when I became a trend forecaster. They had the, the Shah in there. The Shah was this brutal dictator. You had, there, was no, there was no opposition at all. When there's no opposition at all, that's when you see the kind of elements that come in that are radicals. In Egypt, as in Tunisia, again, what we had forecast, and you guys get our press releases, before this happened in Tunisia, our top trend for 2011 was Youth of the World Unite. You're seeing all these young people with university degrees in worthlessness. <laughs> they're not making any dough at all. Right. And they're angry because they know the score. The money's going to a bunch of rich people, and everybody else is getting a shaft. And then we said this is where the revolutions are going to happen. We saw it actually begin in England. Off with their heads, they were screaming at the royal couple as they raised tuition prices 200%. And you're seeing the, the white shoe boy language is wonderful. They call it austerity measures. Here's an austerity measure for you. This is what they did. They're doing this throughout Europe and Ireland. We're going to cut the minimum wage 12%. I mean, you're not making anything already, but 12% less for you. Oh, and by the way, we're going to raise the cost of everything, all the licensing fees, you name it, they're all going up. We're going to cut services, cut pensions, cut benefits. Oh, we're going to extend the retirement age to maybe after you die. Oh, and one other thing, we're going to raise taxes across the board. And the reason we're doing all this is we have to bail out the banks. Listen, they made some bad bets, and the banks can't fail. Because if the banks fail, then everybody goes hungry and dies. Now, what do you think? Um, first of all, a lot of people are saying what happens over there will come here. Hasn't happened yet. The food rides haven't happened yet. The, uh, the, the collapse of the dollar hasn't happened yet. Not saying it won't, but what do you foresee? Do, do you think that the... Uh, the Tea Party movement is uh, powerful, or it's petering out, or what's... Uh, well, the Tea Party movement has to gain its independence. It can't be another branch of the Republican government, you know, the, the Republican Party. And, if they do, and again, this is a trend that we had forecast in 2007, tax revolts in the U.S. Now, this is brought on the Tea Party, but it's been co-opted. It needs to be an independent group, more libertarian, more in the line of Iran Paul, uh, going in that direction. And, and as far as the, what's going on in Egypt, Europe is next stop. Here's the scenario. It's a very simple one. And this is why we wrote this back in the spring in the Trends Journal. The Great War of the 21st century. You're uh -oh. seeing it build up. Get uh -oh. the music. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You're not oh, talking, about, on, you're on, not talking about World War III. World War X. We're on to ten. Here, 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 here's the, here, remember when you were a kid, you know, mm -hmm. I... I, I yeah, I hated school. I ran away from kindergarten. Yeah. You know, the kind of stuff they teach you. <laughs> World War I began when the Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated at Sarajevo. Yeah, that's what I heard. Choices, you know? yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't? It had all these brush fires, and that's what you're seeing now. You're seeing these first Tunisia, Egypt. You're going to start seeing riots. They're happening in Bulgaria, Romania, Lithuania. They don't make the news. By the way, they just had 40,000 people protesting in Serbia against the same exact things they're doing in Tunisia and Egypt. So what's going to happen? governments taking all the money and the people having no dough. That's the bottom line. All these wars are fought over money. And, and the big thing is, oh, it's going to be real. Oh, all wars are fought over religion. No, they're not. It's the bottom line. So when you go back and you see the, the, what has happened, go back to the crash of 1929, the Great Depression. 
in between you had trade wars and currency wars. Let's play forward. The panic of 08. Mm. The, greatest, the greatest recession. Home, home values have fallen 30%. Those are depression era f- fall offs. We're looking at real unemployment, effective unemployment between 16 and 22%. <laughs> Those what's are the, the real numbers. What's the real John number? John Williams shadow stats. Mm. He has it really outlined very what's well. What's the real number right now, Gerald? Quickly. What's that? They say it's 9%. What's the real number? That's what I'm saying. It's around 16. 22% according to. Oh, wow. uh, uh, John Williams shadow stats go mm. there. He's, he's a really intelligent guy. Right. Yeah, but, I mean, they have, I mean, can you imagine these numbers came out last week? They, so we created thirty six thousand jobs. <laughs> you need one hundred and fifty thousand jobs a month just to stay even for population growth. Right. You always leave him with a spoonful of sugar, don't right. you, Gerald? <laughs> On that note, we want to thank uh, you, Gerald Salente, trends researcher. Where can people uh, find you? Trendsjournal.com. Trendsjournal.com. All right. Thank you, Gerald Salente.